Today's lesson is mainly on soldering. We're going to prepare the pipe and we're going to use a 22mm equal T for the first demonstration. Now, when we're using solder fittings, we don't just flux it, heat it up, solder it. We've got to do a bit of preparation beforehand. Because fittings lay in merchants, lay in your bag, lay in the van, we've got to make sure they're clean. We've got to try and get all the grease and anything that's on the fittings off. So we can use a clean text pad, steel wool, or there's sort of brushes and that out in the market you could use as well. And all we're doing is taking the top surface, if there's anything on it. I would always clean the fittings, the 15 mil fittings, the smaller ones, are just a bit harder to clean. Quite good if you've got small fingers. Now to clean the pipe is a must on these, on this. You can see right away, it's a bit cloudy. That's because it's just been oxidized in the fresh air. Also, when you buy it, they're normally wrapped in yellow tape or brown tape. Sometimes that leaves a gum residue behind. When you try and solder, it burns, it oxidizes the pipe, and then the solder doesn't run properly. So all we do is get the pad, run it round, and we do just the ends of the pipe on each one. And we'll try to get everything off it. All we're doing is just try to make it easier for the solder to run. I'm going to use this vise just to hold it and I'll put it in sideways, hopefully get a better view of that. So now I've prepared the pipe, I'm ready for flux. The flux that we use is Laco uh, active flux or self-cleaning flux. Now people think because it says self-cleaning on the bottle or on the tub, they've not got to clean it. I would always clean the pipes anyway, no matter what. Again, it's a good habit to get into and then you're making sure that it's going to run for you. You get a small piece of flux and you put it on the outside of the pipe. Just a thin coating, like that. Then I grab the fitting. Some people put flux on the inside of the fitting. We mostly don't do that anymore. It's okay if it's hot water, cold water, or central heating water. The water will flush the flux off if it stays inside the pipe. But if it's on gas, it stays and can restrict the flow of the gas. So good practice is, just flux the pipe and not the inside of the fitting. And I push a T-piece on like that. Make sure that we've went full slip, that it's pushed fully into the fitting. I get my next pipe. I can also, when I've cut it with the pipe slices, use a reaming tool. And that takes the edge off the inside, because that could be restricting the flow of the water or the gas, and just the outside to make it smooth. Again, I will just flux the outside, not too much. Put that in the T-piece in the fitting and hold it. And then the last piece of pipe I'm going to put in. Now what you don't want to do is, you don't want to solder these two and leave that one out and then come back to it. You want to do the whole fitting in the entirety. So I'm doing a T-piece, I'll do the three ends. If I'm doing an elbow, always make sure I do both ends at the same time and the same with the straight coupling. Make sure you do both ends at the same time, then you know it's done. If I was to solder these two in, go away and come back at a later date, two things could happen. One, solder could run from this pipe, or that one, onto the bottom of that fitting, and then I can't get the pipe in. Also what I'm doing is, I'm oxidizing it, so I've got to give it a good clean again to make sure it's done. And the third reason for it is, when I put this last one in, I'm concentrating on that one. Sometimes the solder could run out or I cause a leak in the two that I've already done. So if you're doing a fitting, make sure you do the whole thing in one hit. And then you can forget about it, you know it's done. Again, last bit of flux. Now when you push it in, you may get some extra flux getting pushed out of the fitting. That's fine. Good practice again. If you wipe the flux off, because that could uh, burn and oxidize the pipe, leave that to the side, and now I'm ready to solder. So everything's all prepared, everything's all clean. I'm going to use map gas for this one, and I'm going to use what most plumbers use as well nowadays, is lead-free solder. They're both roughly the same price now. You still can buy leaded solder, but you can't use the leaded solder on drinking or potable water. So most plumbers would just buy lead-free solder 
and that would be it. So now, there is no great technique to doing this. It's all about timing. So what I'm trying to do now is, I'm going to keep the gas bottle on to whatever end of the fitting I want to start. It doesn't matter. I can start on the top one or the bottom ones. It makes no difference. I'm going to keep the heat on. Then, I'm going to get the solder, the lead free solder, and I'm going to touch with the pipe and the fitting meat. If it melts, I'll put a bit more on it. If it doesn't, I just take it off and put more heat into it. And I keep doing that, touching, until I see a silver or the solder blob on top of the pipe. Then I can add more. Then you see the solder running around the fitting. And then if we're lucky, we'll see it getting drawn into the fitting. That's called capillary action or capillary attraction. That's how the water gets to the top of trees. The surface, the two surfaces, the inside surface of the fitting and the outside surface of the pipe are so close and such a small gap. Any water in there or any solder will get drawn up and fill that gap. We take the heat off, it solidifies and that's our joint made. And as I said, it's all about timing. The more you do, the easier it gets. So I'm going to put the gas on. I'm going to heat up. I'm not going to take the heat off at all. I'm always going to leave the gas on and I'm going to touch. And when I do one, because copper is also a good conductor of heat, these two don't take as long. They're much quicker. Again, I don't want to put solder right round it. I'm just going to drop it onto it and the solder will naturally run round on its own. So I'm going to put the heat on. I keep the a touch, not yet, touch again, not yet, there's a small bit on it. That's one done. It's one round and I've seen it getting drawn into the fitting. I'm going to talk through it, so I'm going to pause when I do each one. But when you're doing it, just do one, two, three. Next one, again, heat on. That's the solder melted. I can see it running round and then the last one, And if there's any sort of drips on it, just get your solder rod or your pencil, whatever you've got, and just take that off and then leave it. So I never took the heat off, I kept the heat on, and all I done was kept adding the solder. I'm trying to keep the heat in the copper pipe. And that is the secret of soldering. Timing. Getting the heat into the pipe and for the solder to melt and for it to get drawn into the fitting through a capillary action. Then once you're finished, take the heat off, solidifies, and that's your joint made. Thank you.